Thank you, John. Uh, I have a lapel mic, so I think I can wander a little bit. I'll just get this uh, started. But I, I must say, John, it's so nice to be introduced for my research at the moment. Uh, lately, um, uh, doing this job, I've been mainly introduced as uh, from the dark side, from that administrative side, administrative side. I don't know why it's not opening. Should open. There we go. Um, so, yes, uh, John, uh, Gay, thank you so much for your opening words. I think what you said resonated uh, very strongly with all of us, how important innovation is. And I have to also congratulate the organisers and John uh, for putting together such a wonderful forum today. Um, I hear yesterday was a wonderful success. Um, I'm hoping today will equally be as exciting. Um, and I think the, the, the words I want to say um, we're really just to, to uh, cap off on, on some of the, the, the uh, exciting things about innovation that are happening at the university. Um, but I guess also what we really want to speak to is how important innovation is um, as a collaborative effort, that we, we're, we're not in this alone. The university can, can act as a hub for research and for a, uh, for a, a, a hub for, for innovation, but we need to work closely with our business partners, our industry partners, our community partners to be able to accelerate and progress um, the interests of the region. Um, so... I just wanted, I think I'm preaching to the converted, so I just wanted to open by, I think what you talked about yesterday, about talking about innovation in itself. Um, innovation is, as we know, it's something that's open to change. It's what we all try to do. It's something about bringing new ideas. Um, but I think sometimes we get caught up in the idea that innovation has to be big and about the big inventions and the big knowledge and the big new thoughts. But it can be as simple as implementing a new change in the way we do business, a new idea that propels business forward in a way that we haven't done it before. Um, and I just sort of reflected on how we're going as an industry and as a country, sorry, and um, I know that some of this was covered yesterday, um, but I think it's particularly exciting to see that we're, when we do look at... Uh, the amount of, of uh, funding that is going into R&D. We do uh, hold our own um, in the Innovation Forum and we do do particularly well. Um, Australia is sitting behind a bunch of countries, in particular China, that is investing heavily in our research and, and development. But we hold our own in what we're achieving and particularly in this region, as Gay pointed out, uh, we're a very progressive and a very innovative community. But research and development is, is it's, it's important to innovation, but it's not the only thing that will drive um, uh, innovation. It, it requires scientific research, but it requires the, cre requires the creative minds. It, mi it requires us being interact with those people who are the thinkers, who are the creators, who have the future uh, in mind. And what we need to be able to promote innovation is that blend of the right environment. We can't propel ourselves forward in growth unless we're respecting the needs of individuals and the environment that we sit within. And so when we think about that appropriate environment that we need, we think about the, the, the support we're going to get from government. We need trade regulations. We need the efficacy of public and private partnerships. We need the support of our private investors. And importantly today, what I'm talking about also is that ease of partnership with academia, how we can actually make it easy for industry and business and community to engage with the university where we do house, uh, particularly in this region, some of the world's best researchers and some of the best facilities that we can offer research and development. So when I look also and we look at who's doing particularly well at innovation, I know some of you may have seen this was this uh, particular slide. It was a particularly interesting report. It's the Global Innovation Barometer done by General Electric. It was completed in 2012. And they actually went out and, looked and surveyed 2,800 senior business leaders across 22 countries um, and got their impressions on who were actually the innovators uh, around the world. And you could rank yourself um, or you could rank who you thought was the champion in innovation. And it was interesting if you look at what we see here, this buzzer does not want to work. Anyway, um, it was brand new batteries even, um, is that the USA obviously here showing a 64% of people thought they were the leaders in, of innovation. Um, half uh, those surveyed also were from the USA and thought that the USA was doing best. Um, we're down here, as you can see, 
we're, we're, the, we're the quiet achievers. I think our vice chancellor at the university is always saying we're the quiet achievers, and I think that's not just about the university, but I think it's about our region as well. We, we do very well, but we often don't rank how well we are. So when we think about how we are in terms of innovation, um, only a very small percentage, 2%, were actually ranking us very highly in terms of innovation. Another interesting report that came out around about the, time, the same time through General Electric was this Innovation Environment Index. And I thought this was also particularly important because when we're looking at innovation, we have to drive innovation within an environment and within a, a culture of innovation. And if we have a climate of negativity, innovation doesn't flourish. Um, what they did was they actually looked... This was post-GST when they were looking at what were people's reactions or their sense of how innovative their companies were or their regions were within a particular area. And it was interesting here that you see a, a group of countries sitting down here. Japan's very, very interesting because they're actually one of our very strong innovators currently. But the perception post-GST was that they're in a very negative uh, environment for promoting innovation. Um, the arrows here just reflect the trends over the years, and you can see that, interestingly, the USA, people are feeling, whilst they've gone through a period of, a prolonged period of intense innovation, there is a sense in the community, amongst businesses, that innovation or the, the reception for innovation or the appetite for uh, innovation is declining in the US. Australia is actually on a relatively, in a relatively uh, balanced position, um, but if you look us to the average global position, we're a little bit towards the unfavourable end uh, or the negative side of innovation, but still sitting in a very positive, positive uh, environmental position. Um, those sitting in those areas of positive environment, um, favourable environments, um, are very interesting countries. Interestingly, China's had this incredible growth uh, over the last few years, but there is a perception amongst the community, I think it's reflected in the political environment, uh, certainly in the economic environment, there is, a, uh, is some slowdown, certainly economically, and that's been reflected in the, uh, in the attitude or the, um, the appetite for innovation in China. And these countries are showing over the last couple of years, Sweden and Israel, some very strong growth in terms of new innovation innovation. And then when we take another look at, at, at who is actually innovating, if we look at Australia and we say, who are the people doing the innovating? Again, I, this was a, a, the Australian Innovation Systems Report in 2011. This is an in interesting graphic. If you look at it along the side here, we can see that what's the percentage of innovation or innovating uh, businesses up the side. And along the bottom, if you like, or in, in terms of the size of these balls, we're seeing the percentage of employment. And what's interesting to note is here we have arts and recreation services, with my arts and recreation services, very small percentage of the population employed in that area, but very high levels of innovation. So I thought this was quite interesting to see where we have large numbers of people, uh, particularly in, in here, we've got the retail trade, we're still seeing high levels of innovation. We look down here, electricity and gas, small, not particularly strong innovation. But it was an interesting, and there's an interesting uh, point here, which I think most of us would have predicted, information, media and telecommunications. Relatively small proportion of people employed in that sector, but relatively low, high levels of innovation. So I think these are quite informative slides to get a picture of what, where Australia sits in terms of innovation and what's the appetite uh, for innovation. I don't think... I think Gabe beautifully spoke to the benefits of innovation. Innovation, innovation is so critical. Um, We've got a rapidly changing environment and world. And economically, we've just had the budget over the last two days. I'm sure we're all still a little shaking about uh, how that's going to take us forward over the next few years. Um, but clearly, innovation, most businesses, it's very rare for a business not to report that innovation is important for their, for their industry. And as Gay mentioned, the Hunter is one of the largest regional economies in Australia. And whilst we've had significant change over the last 10 years, we've seen incredible growth with a $37 billion economy in 2012. 
Um, innovation, it uh, requires uh, collaboration. It's, a, it's, it's becoming increasingly specialised. It's increasingly, increasingly uh, demanding on our population, requiring extensive skills and expertise. Um, and it really needs us to be working with business and research. We talk about innovation at the institution at the University of Newcastle, but we can't do it alone. It is something that we really rely on our business, industry and community partners to propel ourselves forward into the world of innovation. And I'd just like to acknowledge the Hunter Innovation Scorecard, which I think was a tremendous innovation. Uh, thank you, Todd and, and uh, Gay. I think this was uh, obviously a wonderful uh, uh, report that came out and launched in 2013. And what I know Todd's going to talk to later today um, is that most of... 66% uh, of, of Hunter businesses are likely to use an external uh, business or industry uh, to propel innovation in their industry or in their business. So those benefits of collaboration, again, look, I'm a scientist, I can't help it, I have to put graphs up. Um, but I also thought this was really important. Um, this comes from the DISIT um, website and it's again from that Innovation Systems report. And what it beautifully illustrates is that collaboration is, is really, really important. If we don't have collaboration, we don't have that boost in productivity. So here we can see we've got no innovation, a perception of no innovation. We've got no collaboration. We add in collaboration and we get, you know, a little bit of a shift in improvement in business uh, innovation and productivity. We have innovation, but we don't have collaboration. Well, we see an increase in productivity. That's great. What's the nice part of this story is that when we've got innovation, but we've also got collaboration, we have the synergy of the two. And that's when we see the real increase in productivity. And that's what I think we're talking to today. And I think that's the value of this forum, is it's bringing industry, the region, our community together with the university as well to promote that collaboration and increase in innovation. So I think just, just touching on public research, I guess most of the research that um, is carried out in the, in the public sector is carried out um, by the universities um, uh, in terms of the, the basic sciences, but also our applied sciences, um, and across a wide range of sectors. Um, but what we also do, and I think which is important to point out, is that we provide the workforce for industry, business and the community. We're training those graduates to go out and be innovative in your industries and to come up with as creative solutions. And it's, a, it's an imperative for the university to be able to create those, those graduates who have those qualities that you're looking for in your businesses to propel your industries for, further forward. We can act as hubs for research. We can do that uh, by collaborating with business and industry, but we also propel industry forward and innovation forward through providing you with the best graduates um, that we can, we can provide. So, I look, I can't... We always ta have to take the opportunity to tell, uh, tell the world how proud we are of our institution. I think, as a region, we are so fortunate to have the University of Newcastle, with its almost 40,000 students, being top 3% of the universities in the world. And recently released, you would have seen, we are now number one in the universities in Australia of those under 50. And that's a tremendous achievement for a young university. Um, and I think that we do that because we sit in a region that supports us. I think that if we're not a part of a region and supported by our communities, by our industries and by our businesses, our institution can't grow. So we are hoping that we provide you with that global innovation, um, the global knowledge and that innovation hub. And particularly, you know, I think that we have representatives here from HMRI and from NIA. Um, these are our two flagship uh, research institutes that are promoting and providing um, uh, research that offers that translation into industry, into the uh, health sciences, um, allows us to move research from the benchtop um, into industry, into businesses and out into the communities where it's best needed. Um, we're partners in building skills and innovation. Um, we, we have a global rep reputation for, for building world-class research and innovation. We do this exceptionally well, as I'm sure most of you know, in health and medicine, science, engineering, 
uh, humanities and the creative industries and arts, business and law, and we have a particularly strong uh, um, uh, research focus in Indigenous education and research. But what we have to do is, is actually be out there talking to what people need and what the, what the appetite is mm. and what is needed by our clients and by our community in our region, not only uh, regionally, I should say, but also what is needed globally. So we want to work out what is desirable to our, uh, uh, to our users, what is viable in the marketplace and what is possible with the technology that we can develop. And that brings us to innovation. So innovation in the hunter, I'm hoping I haven't gone over in time. Just to sum up my, my thoughts, and I think I'm most probably reflecting, hopefully, I think the views of some of those that were spoken about yesterday, is that we in the hunter are fortunate to have such a vibrant industry and business community. Um, we're fortunate to, to work well with you uh, through, the through the university and our, and our institutes. We need that university and industry collaboration to push innovation forward. But we also need the support of the government. We need the government to be, to, to be supporting us to finance those early stage high growth businesses, get behind those innovative industries um, and propel them into the future. We need to be putting money into research and development. We need to, if we want to uh, increase the intensity of our engagement in innovation, we, may, we need that co-investment. Now, we're not just talking about the government. The institution that I work with, University of Newcastle, has a responsibility and a commitment to innovation. So we have to put our money where our mouth is as well, and we, hopefully we can do that with industry and our business partners supporting us along the way as well. So it's a big partnership. We can't do it alone. We have the ability to produce high technology um, exports. Um, we know that most probably the top innovative sectors remain in the pharmaceuticals, defence, aerospace and a number of other areas. But I think, if, I think if we look forward, we've got some exciting areas this region can really speak to, which is the green economy, the creative economy and biotechnology and advanced healthcare um, technology as well. What the university also, I think, can, can offer... Um, uh, and is doing uh, some very exciting uh, work in is, is the promotion and development of our students that work in what we call STEM, in the STEM area. So that's science, technology, engineering and maths. And the university is, is proud of the innovative work we're doing in new approaches to education and how we can actually provide you with graduates that are going to actually meet your needs as a business and industry community. So I think if Australia is to increase its position in terms of innovation, we need not only the government, we need academia, we need the university and we need industry to all pull together. And I think that's why we're doing so well in, in the region, in the Hunter, is that we do that particularly well through embracing our university and working with you as our partners. Um, I think the last thing I wanted to say was that creative... Creativity must be valued as one of the key drivers of innovation. And I think we have an exciting uh, and innovative uh, and creative region. Um, and I think uh, that we've got a long way to go, but I think we've got an exciting future together. So I think that's all I wanted to say. And I just um, I hope that that's opened up today for you. I think you're going to have some wonderful speakers uh, from the university we've got uh, today, but I know from other uh, uh, industry as well. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see what this forum has become. We were just talking. I think uh, it's come a long way over the last few years. Um, I know now that uh, speaking uh, to creativity, I have one of my colleagues sitting up the back here who's up next who's going to talk uh, to you about uh, what we do very, very well in the creative space. So thanks very much.